everybody. Welcome back. This is Amy of Amy J's Creations. Um, it is May. Oh, shoot. It's May 14th, 2021. Um, and this is floss tube number five. I probably should have checked. I was too excited to start filming. I didn't do much checking. I think it's floss tube number five maybe six, but I'm thinking five. Um, I don't have a whole lot to show, like lots of different projects because I basically only worked on two. Um, my mania, as I talked a little bit, I think in the last video is I'm going to try to do a focus piece and then on the weekends, give myself a new start. But the thing, and then work on my Sunday my Sunday stitch on Sunday and then Saturday and maybe Sunday evening, if I've got enough done, work on my new start. But here's the deal. Like right from the start, May was messed up, that plan, because May 1st was Saturday. But I felt like I needed to start my focus piece before I started a new start. So I didn't start it Saturday. I started my focus piece. Well then, it was, there's a whole story, but I had a lot of hassle with it. So then the next weekend, I didn't feel like I could start a new start because I was kind of finally in the groove of my focus piece and I wanted to keep working on it. So I didn't start it. And uh, then we went to Zermatt and I didn't, do hardly any cross stitching. Um, so I'm like, <laughs> I've got my focus piece to show you and a little tiny bit on my Sunday stitch that I've done. My new start, which is the Lindy Stitches um, uh, Pride and Prejudice little design that she created. I will start that tomorrow. I, I am finally allowing myself to start it tomorrow. I feel like I've gotten enough done. So anyway, so, but I do have a, a couple, a previous finish, not mine, but my mother's to show you. So I guess what I will start with is my Sunday focus piece. So I decided, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to do a whole lot of stitching in, in Termot because I was going with my husband. It was kind of like a little getaway. I didn't know what the lighting would be like. I knew that my focus piece is really con uh, like complicated and I didn't want to bring my whole setup. So I brought this along because I could stitch on it in the car. I could stitch on it a little bit at night, which I did. Um, but then it turned out I completely messed up. Sorry, this is like so wrinkly. I... Way back stitching this, I must have counted this line in the end. Oh, let me hold this up. The line in the end several times. I still messed up. Which means that this anointed one was not in the right spot. So when I, and this was not in the right spot. So when I went to go start this section, I started up here aligning it with this thing and then ran out of room. So I had to rip it all out and then start again. So that was the bulk of my stitching. And like this son of God, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a little indentation where that O is supposed to be. So I'm going to have to go back and fill that in because it's all messed up, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to rip it all out. This little thing I will rip out this big, this, this big thing. I don't know it I don't care it's not important enough I did work on son of man I got that done so I mean I made some progress on it it's just frustrating that I didn't get as much as I wanted done because because <laughs> I messed up also I didn't stitch at all on Mother's Day it was Mother's Day um I took a nap. I hung out with my family. I talked to my mom. I talked to my kids, except for one. Um, and so I just, I didn't, I didn't want to stitch, so I didn't. 
I figured if I'm not feeling it, I'm not going to force myself. So I didn't. Um, so that's, that was my Sunday stitch and my, what I took and worked on in the car and in Termont a little bit. What we did, so our little, okay, why I got any stitching done at all was this Airbnb that we rented has the most fantastic view of Termont, of the Matterhorn. Oh my gosh. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The Wi-Fi was really sketchy. It worked best in the living room and one bedroom, but the bedroom we chose to use, there wasn't really any Wi-Fi. And um, there was no TV. So after we got back from hiking, there wasn't like really a whole lot to do. But for the drive down, because it's like a four hour drive down and back, we my husband had gotten us the audio books of Shadow and Bone. Mary Ashcraft, she recommended the TV show and the books. We watched the TV show from Netflix, loved it. And so then he he got the audiobooks and we listened to that on the car ride down. We listened to it while we were hiking. It's what got me up the mountain. We uh, listened to it in the evening in our apartment uh, before we decided we were tired enough to go to sleep. And listen to it again the next day when we went hiking and listen to it in the car again coming home. Um, so we finished the whole first book. We got halfway through the second book. Um, he has now, he went on on his own to just read them on his own because he's like, when are we going to have that much time alone again for audiobooks? Which I said, yeah, that's, that's fair. Um, so he read them all on his own. And um, he put them on my phone and I have started reading them. So he's read the whole Shadow and Bone series. He's like, there's more, but read these ones first before I get the other books. And I said, okay, I will do that. We really, it's, it's, you know, young adult fiction, but it's really well written. The story is really engaging. Um, it helped that we had watched the TV show because there's a whole lot of characters and it was easier to like picture them from the TV show and keep them all straight. And also the audiobook was great because there's all these German words, or not German, sorry, Russian words that I would have been like, that's kish, 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 kish. like I wouldn't know how to pronounce those when I'm reading it in my head. But because we listened to the audiobook, I'm like, oh, that's Kirbysk. Like, okay, I can I can say that now. Um so yeah, if you want an audiobook, I had just finished Jane Eyre. And usually after I finish a really awesome book like that, I'm like, nah, I don't want to read anything for a while because I got to like, let it give it time to settle, you know, enjoy the awesomeness of it. But uh, Shadow and Bone was a great follow up piece to Jane Eyre. It was really great. So I recommend that if you want to have something to listen to while you stitch or watch, watch the TV show. The TV show is a combination of there's two, she's got two or three sets of books set in the same world universe um, and the TV show combined two of those and um, but you can read the first set of books and it's great without the extra stuff from the TV show anyway great 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 okay so what was my focus piece then that was so complicated I didn't want to bring up to Termot it is this lavender and lace oh christmas tree now this is the pattern that my mother started years ago and could not finish her pattern she doesn't have you know they used to include like an actual photograph photo film on photo paper um for the design and she didn't that's not there anymore she just has the paper um, so that's why I'm showing it to you on your form. She had gotten some started. I'm going to hold this up here. So she had gotten all this, all this gold of the border started. And the first little tippy top of the tree. And then she stopped. <clears throat> and so I had a starting place from the, I could figure out really easily where she had started 
because I was going off this little red um, Christmas ornament. But the problem was she had made a few errors and it was hard for me to figure out like how to fudge them. Like I can fudge my own mistakes, but I couldn't, I, I couldn't figure out how to fudge hers. That's an error on my part, not on my mother's. And it was kind of overwhelming to me because I have done some complicated patterns in the past with lots of color changes and lots of shading. But this is, this tree especially is a lot of, I mean, you can see down here, it's almost like confetti stitching a little bit where it's like one or two and then you move to something else. And I could not, I hadn't done that, that type of stitching for so long. I had to figure out a pattern. First, I was like, I'm going to just do like, thread three needles with three different colors and just go line by line and do every color. That was confusing to me because I was using two greens. I kept having to stop and check to remember which green was on which needle. And um, the, the hanging threads were getting all caught up and I was just like, after I think one or two lines, I went, no, 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 no. And the fact that it was, I still couldn't tell where my mother was, was still bugging me. I was trying to make it work and I just couldn't. And finally, I bit the bullet. I grabbed the seam ripper and I just, like three lines of stitching. I just ripped everything out. She had like a candle with the thing. I ripped it all out. I was merciless. I'm like, I have to start over fresh. I have to get it back to a spot where I know I'm going to start from here and go forward. Killed me to do it because I was ripping out some of my stitching. I was ripping out some of my mom's stitching, but I was starting to hate this pattern, hate this project filled with loathing and oh, drudgery. And oh my gosh, I promised my mom I was going to finish this and I hate it. And I, you know, uh, I don't want those feelings associated with this cross stitch piece, especially because one, I love my mom. I want to give her a gift that's filled with love. But two, she already told me since I'm stitching it when she dies, which hopefully is not for another several years, a couple decades, mom. Um, I get it back and I again didn't want to get it back and see that thing and go oh yeah I remember I hated that I had a horrible time stitching it like I don't want that so I stitch for fun I stitch because I love it so I decided to just rip it out start over and and what I did is I chose what to me seemed like the most used the dominant color of the tree and just stitch that line by line by line. And I will show you the back. It is using up way more thread. It makes for a pretty messy back, but is the only way I could think that worked for my brain and how I stitch and my stitching level of competence to keep this straight. And so I just carry it over and there's some big carries and I just, Go to the end, turn back around, and go back the other way, and get to the end, and turn back the other way. And I have gone ahead and stitched now the first, mostly half of the tree. Well, but of course it gets fatter as it gets farther down, so it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I'll show you the pattern real quick. Sorry, let me get up here. So... Maybe we'll edit that. <clears throat> All right. So here's the pattern. Now I know cross stitch, floss tube rules are don't show the pattern. People can make a screenshot. I think that's one of those rumors of like people would put razor blades and candy apples at, at uh, Halloween. There's never ever once been one actual verified instance of that happening. Nobody's ever put syringe you know, bad stuff in candy. It's just this rumor that got started and people got scared. I say, if you can really actually stitch off of a screenshotted from YouTube pattern, more power to you, man. 
that's that's an incredible talent you shouldn't let that go to waste because that's freaking hard it's hard enough to stitch it when you got the real pattern so what we my mom had started doing was coloring in the non-tree bits and so i went ahead and did that as well because then it helps me it helps me uh figure out where i am kind of gives me focal points okay so I, and she had folded, she folded her pattern. So I have done, I stitched all the way down to this fold and the first line on this back thing. Now, so I've still got a ways to go, but I feel like I've got a system now, it's working. One of the things she gave me, this is like an old, it's just like a metal plate. And she's got this like, magnifying glass and it's got like a couple cracks in it but you know what it works and it's got this red line and so you put the red line in between the two you know two lines that you're stitching on and so then i fall i just follow along that red line and then i follow along below the red line and then I move it down and I go to the next one and go to the next one. And it, as it gets wider, I'm sliding it back and forth, but it works. I would love a bigger one, but like, I think my mom got this in the eighties. I don't know if they even exist anymore. I will look around. If they do, I'm totally going to get one. It's, I could not stitch this without it. So thank you, mother. I, and with it now I am, Really excited because I have like those lavender and lace angel of autumn and angel of spring patterns I bought years ago at a Hobby Lobby in Texas on Clarence. We lived in Houston for a summer while my husband interned at Compaq for his, during his MBA, uh, getting his MBA degree. <clears throat> anyway. And I, this is before Hobby Lobby's existed in tech, in Utah. And it was like this magical, wonderful place. Oh my gosh, I was so excited. Anyways, I saw those there. They had like some clearance bin of old cross-stitch patterns and I snapped them up. Anyhow, but they've always intimidated me. And now I'm like, yeah, I can do those with this. I whip those things out. But again, my goal is to get this finished for my mother so I can bring it when we come in July to visit her in the States. So this is this is not only my focus piece for May, this is going to be my focus piece till it's done. And knowing me, I'm going to get, I'm going to be putting the last stitches in on the plane. Because once I get it all stitched, there's all this beading. I don't know if you can see in the photo, but see all that white that's on the tree? Those are beads. You string it on a floss and you just kind of, so it looks like a garland, and you just kind of make stitches, attach it every once in a while in random spots on the tree. Um, I'm hoping I have that done because I, I'm scared of actually putting beads, bringing beads on the blade, but I might have to, um, or maybe I'll just save the, like the wording at the bottom, the old Christmas tree for, for the plane. I don't know. It's, I feel like I'm making progress. I'm super happy, but it's, it's a, it's a big girl and it's, it's gonna, it's gonna take a bit. Um, but at least I have a, I have a plan now. So that's exciting. Really exciting. Actually, the other thing I did because I needed to have something that I felt like I was finished. I don't know how you guys are, but that's my personality is I starting things is super, super fun. It's my very favorite part of the project, but I love finishing things. That sense of accomplishment. It's why I do laundry once a week so I can feel like the laundry is done. I clean the bathrooms once a week. The bathrooms are clean. I'm done with that. Till the next week, you know. But we ignore that. We enjoy that feeling for a few days of I am done. Ignoring that the, you know, as soon as I finish with the laundry, the, the, the hampers are filling back up again. No, 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 no. We don't think that way. We're done. Anyhow, so I, some of those baby blankets, baby quilts that I had um, finished stitching the tops in my last video, 
I went ahead and I, I um, basted them all, all five of them to, no, what was it? Three, four, all four of them. I, I basted, you know, put it back together, put the, put the flannel, uh, the, the batting. I did have to sew. That was kind of intense. I had to make Franken batting. So I used up a whole bunch of my little strips from previous quilts that like the extra that you cut off when you're squaring up a quilt. I save all those and I sewed them and sewed them and sewed them together. And I managed to make enough batting for all four baby quilts plus a little bit over, which I'm super happy about. Um, and so then I ended up, I quilted first the, the other baby girl quilt. And again, used up some cute flannel that I had. Sewed that together to make another piece in two pieces. So that's done. And then I started on the boy ones. And so this is the first boy quilt that I got all quilted with the cute flannel backing with the heart with the hearts in the same blue that matched. Found this cute, cute binding and got that sewed on. So those two are done. And then the other two boy quilts are basted and ready for me to quilt in the next couple of weeks when I need another finish or two because I'm still working on the giant Christmas tree that will never end. But it's okay. It's not a chore anymore. It's just, wow, this is a big project. <clears throat> and that's really, that's, that's all I've done. Uh, like I said, we went hiking and we were gone in Cermat for three days. Um, we ended up hiking way more than I thought. So we, our, our plan was we were going to take, they have like these, you know, like little trains or little, not necessarily, sometimes a ski lift, but also it's just like a, yeah, a train um, that you can take up to a certain point in the mountain and then get off and then walk around mountains. And in, um, there's a stop called Soon Eka, which is like, sunshine corner and it has a really good view of the Matterhorn across the valley and there's this beautiful walk that you can do that goes to five different lakes that are up in that area and they all will reflect well not all of them but many of them reflect the Matterhorn it's really cool photographs that's what I wanted to do so I thought we would take the train up and then take that as our hike well we get there and apparently <laughs> It's really early in the season. Now we knew that we were like getting there just at the end of the winter season and just the beginning of summer season. But we thought, and we knew some things would be closed and that was going to be fine with us because actually we like, we like going places where, when it's sort of in the off season, which this was, but we didn't realize just how off season, like my husband bought, brought his ski shoes, snow, what are they called? snowshoes that's what they're called blah, blah, blah. he brought his snowshoes and he looked into renting some for me it was gonna be like 15 bucks for the day fantastic we can get him there and go snowshoeing on some of the trails so we asked at the tourist information office super friendly lady where they hand out free chocolate mm, yum yum um and she's like oh no snowshoeing there's not enough snow on the trails left to do snowshoeing hikes okay well, then that means the trails are open for hiking. And she's like, well, no, there's still too much snow for how a lot of the trails to be open and they haven't been groomed properly. So every, every year, and I knew this because I've gone to the mountains and helped with our youth group from church. We've helped in areas where they had really bad avalanches to repair the trails. And some of it requires literally like after the snow and avalanche and rock slides, they have them every year. Most people don't die from them, but there's just a lot of snow and they create, it, was, it comes sliding down the mountain. It does damage to what are little trails. And so we were like with a pickaxe and shovels, like hacking into the side of the mountain to recreate the trail for tourists. And they were super happy. This was in Brienz because their tourism, they, I mean, some of these little mountain towns, they live off of tourism. And they couldn't, like half their trails were closed because they but they were so damaged. And so we went up and, and worked and worked and worked. And they were able, by the time we left after one week, well, it was five days of work, 
with our youth group, they were able to open all the trails. The guy was so appreciative and we did it all for, you know, it was like they didn't have to pay us or anything. We even paid to stay in the, in the little hut. I mean, they gave us a slightly reduced rate, but anyway, so they hadn't done that. They hadn't, they haven't even started repairing the trails yet in the Zermatt area from winter damage from snow and avalanches and rock slides. But, and so he was like, Chris was like, well, which trails are, are there any open? She's like, yes, yes, there's some open. And so she shows us on a map and marks them all. And she was super, super helpful. And for the short time of our visit, we had plenty to do, plenty to choose from and plenty to do. But she did inform us that the train that goes up to Soon Eka, which I had planned on taking, was not running yet because it's the off season. And that trail around to the five glacier lakes was not open. But what was open was the trail from Termot to Suneca, up the mountain. And so we were like, okay, all right, let's do that. My husband was super excited. He really wanted to. And I was like, okay, but like, I'm totally out of shape, people, totally out of shape. And um, it's like, well, we ended up walking 20 kilometers that day, which I'm not even going to try to figure out what that is in miles. Because uh, I know how long 10 miles is and I know how long 20 kilometers is, but I don't know how what they are in relation to each other. Sorry, I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm not going to figure that out. So it ended up being 20 kilometers total. And we even took a shortcut up that was shorter in length, but steeper. In hindsight, that was a bad decision for round, adorable little me to try. But my husband was super gung ho, and I, I want, I, you know, I am stubborn and determined. He really wanted to do this hike, and I really wanted to do this hike with him. So I did it. Uh, we took several breaks, and we didn't go very fast, but we did it. Um, and then we get to the top, and I will say oh, that feeling of like. So it was like a good eight or nine kilometers up. And then I think it was eight kilometers up. And then we took the longer way down because it was really steep in spots going up and icy and snowy too. I was really glad we had our good hiking boots on. And I was afraid that I was going to end up having to just like sit on my bum and sl slide down, <laughs> avoiding trees and jagged rocks. And it would not have been good because it's not, it's like there's forest everywhere. It's, it's not like, you know, going down a sledding trail. So we ended up taking the longer, more circuitous route um, down the mountain. And so that's why we ended up with about 20 kilometers total. And it was, it was lovely, but we were so, both of us were so sore and tired that night. Um, we went to a really nice restaurant for dinner. Um, they, they were open, but you had to sit on the terrace and we're like up in the mountains. There's snow everywhere. In fact, while we were hiking, it was, it didn't snow on us, but there was a, a cold wind, which actually felt kind of good because I was really hot. Um, but it was, once we got to the top, it was like, oh, I don't, we need to sit somewhere to eat our lunch where we're out of the wind because this is cold. And so we were down in the valley, but there was still that wind blowing that night. And they had blankies, fluffy blankies to put over you. And we were wearing our coats and they had like heaters, heat lamp things. It, but it was still, my husband was kind of cold, but the food was delicious. Um, and anything that I don't have to cook tastes fantastic. It's my favorite food. Um, so anyway, so then the next day we wake up. And we're, we have to leave. So it took us basically a full day to get there because our GPS took us wrong, but that was fine. It was lovely views. We, you know, meandered through Switzerland, took a bunch of photos. Um, and that evening we just walked around. We explored this, the town of Zermatt, which I had, I saw stuff I'd never seen before, even though I've been there twice before. So it was great and lovely and perfect. So then Tuesday we hiked all day and then ate out. And so Wednesday we were leaving, we had checkout at 11. Surprisingly, even though we went, we were exhausted and had walked all that way, we both woke up like before seven. We slept so deeply, I guess, that our bodies were done sleeping before seven. 
And so we got up, we got dressed and we're like, Hey, we have time to go on another short little hike and get back before we have to check out at 11. And, and I was like, yeah, that's great. And so she had pointed out to us, the, the girl at the tourism office, there's this like totally flat goes walk path that goes along the river in Sermont that leads to this other little town called Fury. Okay, it should take Max an hour to get there. Like I said, flat. That's great. That's perfect. So we start walking and it's lovely. And it's like, oh, this feels so good because it's like a relaxing walk. We're just stretching out our sore muscles, but we're not hurting them. We wore not our hiking boots, but our trail shoes, which were lighter. And so it gave my husband had gotten a couple of blisters. I thankfully didn't really get a blister the day before. Um, it was perfect, right? But then we kind of come to the end of Saramont Village where the river kind of goes through the forest to get to this next town. And the trail is covered in a bunch of snow. And like, I can't even see like, if there's just a little section. It's as far as I can see, there is deep snow. And we're not in our hiking boots anymore. We're in our little trail shoes and I think well this can't be the right trail then because she said it was open and this doesn't look open to me um but there's this like right next to it there's this other little trail that veers around that looks like it eventually curves around and goes to the same spot let's take that one because it's completely clear so we do and it has a gentle incline and we think well you know it'll eventually go back down it keeps going up and up and up and Chris is checking his GPS and he's like okay look we're only 20 minutes from Fury. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. We hike and hike and hike and hike. He checks again. That's weird. Now we're, it says we're 30 minutes away. And I'm like, how can we be farther away when we've been walking for a while? He's like, I don't know. Plus this thing is, again, it's not steep, steep, but it's pretty steep in some spots. And it's a constant, never ending incline. And we had just hiked all that way the day before. And, uh, but it was beautiful. It was lovely. And I really, you know, we, we like to get to our destination. So we keep going, we keep going, we keep going. He checks his thing and he's like, okay, look, we've got it. We're, we're about to the point where we're going to have to turn around to make it back to the Airbnb to check out on time. But we're, but I've checked the thing and now it says we're 50 minutes away from this town. I don't know what's going on. And I was like, I, I am exhausted. I'm not sure I can go much further. And so he was like, there was like just a little, he's like cur curve around the bend. He's like, look, I can tell from where we're at on the mountain that we're almost r at the top. And I'm like, it's true. We are like, we could see that we were like one more you know, switch back and we'd be at the top. So he's like, I'm just going to run ahead just to go see what's up there. And then I'll come back and we can go. And I said, that's great. I'm, I'm just going to wait here by this adorable little mountain shed for you. It's raining. It was slightly snowing. I was again, so hot that all I did was put like my hoodie hood on my head to protect my head from the rain, but left my arms out and did not it was just hanging down my back like a cape um, because I was too hot to put it on all the way. But I didn't want to get my head completely soaking wet because that can bring all kinds of not good things later. And so I'm standing there waiting for him. And then I'm like, Amy Charles, you are so close to the top. Just do it. So I walked up after him. And it was true, it was like around the one corner and then one more like tiny little loop and there's this gorgeous little mountain. It wasn't even a village, it was just like a collection of like maybe six buildings, these mountain chalet, Swiss chalet. I was expecting Heidi's grandpa to come walking out of one of them at any second. It was gorgeous and beautiful view of the valley. Wonderful, wonderful. At this point, it said that Fira, the town we were trying to reach, was like an hour and a half away. We didn't even understand what was happening. Whatever. It was gorgeous. Took a bunch of photos. Got that wonderful feeling. We could see that there was a path that like went e even farther onto a second mountain but plateau, but we had reached one. We were good. We needed to get back. It was lovely. 
way back was great because it's all downhill. <laughs> we discovered that when we got back and looked at the map more closely, that when we had veered off to the right, we had completely left. That trail that was completely covered with snow, that was the one to Fieri. The one we took went to a little town called Zmutt. Z-M-U-T-T. -T. Zmutt was that little area where those little houses were. If you kept on going up, eventually you got to the base station for the Matterhorn. Like where people hang out, there's a hut, you can get a free meal, spend the night so that the next day you can hike the matter, the, the peak refreshed. That was not the easy flat along the river trail I needed to recuperate after my huge hike the day before. No, I climbed like part of the hike that takes you up the freaking Matterhorn. Even though I said I was not hiking the Matterhorn, I kind of did. But I will say this, it was gorgeous. And now I totally want to go back again when I'm more in shape and hike further up. I want to get to that like base camp station. I don't want to hike the Matterhorn. It's a one that's like actual rock climbing with picks and crazy stuff. Um, you have to, it's like Everest. You have to get a permit. Only so many people per year are allowed to go. You have to usually need a guide. People die. Like I'm not interested in that, but to get to the base camp, I think, I think that would be really cool. Um, it would be like another, it was going to be like another two to three to four, depending on how slow you hike hours to get to there from where we were after we'd already been hiking for an hour and a half. But still, um, I totally want to do it. Anyway, so we come back down, get in our car. And it was funny because then after two days of like intense hiking, we're in the car for a while. Oh, the mountain pass over that we wanted to go on the old Roman road. <laughs> yeah, also closed due to snow. It's not even opened, scheduled to open until sometime in June. So we ended up having to take the car train, but whatever, it's fine. So when we finally get to the car train station, it only leaves at certain times. And so we had gotten there just after one had left. Um, but that was fine. We had time to go to the bathroom. We got a little snack and we were like the second car on the train, which was cool. But we pull up to our spot to get in the line to wait, turn the car off, and, and we go to get out to go to the bathroom. And we both turn to the door handle after being in the car for like two hours and go, oh, <laughs> because just trying to turn and step out was so painful. And I got up and Chris got stood up and it was like we were walking hunched over with these tiny little shuffling steps like a 95 year old man who just was recovering from a stroke. I mean, seriously, it was ridiculous and totally embarrassing because there's all these cars around us watching us hobble, hobble, hobble. But that was all we could do. By the time I got to where the bathroom was, I could sort of stand up more. And by the time I was back, I'd, after I'd walked around a little bit, I could kind of walk like a like a human being who'd been doing it for a while. Um, but wow, 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 wow. Well, then my husband is like, we got to do more hikes. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of, I kind of want to do more hikes too. So this past Thursday, well, yesterday is uh, Ascension Day, Alfart in German. And it's when Christ returned up to heaven there's they celebrate all kinds of christian holidays in europe and they're all national holidays everything is closed no grocery stores are open no nothing no schools no businesses um and so we we and my son who then had the day off too my daughter did not want to come she's not a hiker um we drove to another little mountain it's about an hour away in Heidi Land is what it's called. Like that area is called Heidi Land because that's where Johann Spierli, who wrote the story, is from and where it was based in, in that area. Anyway, and um, we 
we you kind of drive mostly to the top and then we walked higher up and around and there's like this frozen lake up there in the summer of course it's like a lake lake but now it's frozen the, the trail we again wore our hiking boots there was it was mostly clear but there was quite a bit of snow um it was again pretty cold but i and there was a light i can't even really call it a drizzle it was really weird it was like two drops and then nothing for like 10 minutes and then like a drop and there was like this mist that moved around but not really really rain and actually it was very pleasant it was kind of perfect weather for an out of shape easily overheated woman to go hiking in because I didn't get overheated because I could just take my coat off and be like oh this feels so good um and it was it was a much much quicker hike it's only like it's less than four kilometers up and four kilometers down um but but again beautiful beautiful scenery and it was really fun. And when we got there, then we could see, oh, you can go here and here and here. There's all these trails. So again, my husband's like, when it gets a little nicer weather, I want to come back here again. And I'm like, I'm too. So I think that's kind of going to be our thing that not every weekend because he won't have time for that. But on a pretty regular basis, we're going to be doing a lot more hiking this year, which is fantastic. I love it. We live in a, a country that's got beautiful, beautiful, beautiful hiking trails. And we've never really taken a whole lot of advantage before because we had a lot of little kids. We like, like you can fall off the cliff. There's not like safety railing on these things. And um, they weren't really interested. But now... We have the time, the kids are, that don't want to come are either not living here or are old enough, you know, the youngest is 13, almost 14, so she's fine by herself um, for most of the day. She can, you know, she cooked herself noodles and opened a jar of pasta sauce and she was fine. So made herself some oatmeal with peanut butter and strawberries, like she, she's completely self-sufficient. So we can do more of that. And I think we will. And he, I'm going to put it on, put it on record. One of the goals we really want to do for the end of the season, like in September, is hike Pilatus. It's a mountain down in Lucerne. We've, we've gone up before, taken the train, but there's a trail up. And it's not a, it's not a hard trail in that it's not like you're like rock climbing. It's literally like there's some steps and then you walk and there's switchbacks and you go past all these farmers um, where they take their cows to graze for the summer. But it's, it's, it's steep and it's long. But I've also, the one time we were up there, I saw like 75 year olds coming up the trail as we passed them on the train who are hiking it and then they reach the vista and it says it should take you like three two and a half three hours from top to bottom so i'm figuring like four hours for me but anyway so we have to do a lot more hiking to condition ourselves that we can actually enjoy that and accomplishment and have a good time we were going to do it last year because we both turned 50 um and it was our but we didn't i was just not mentally prepared to do the physical work that would require that would make that possible but this year I am so that's that's the plan for at the end of the hiking season whereas we just now started so we'll see what happens but I'm kind of excited so that's been going on with us why I didn't do a whole lot of high, uh, stitching because I was doing a lot of hiking but I did want to show one last thing um, I talked about this before. This is the cross stitch that my mother made for Chris and I for our wedding. Um, it's amazing. It has place of honor in our um, in our living room. She it's a lavender and lace pattern. She did change the hair because my husband, when we were dating and engaged, his hair what his hair when he goes out into the sun. Gets blonde highlights, although it looks dark brown now. So she changed the hair to have it look slightly more like us. 
Um, my wedding dress looks nothing like this. I didn't have a flower curl, but I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, my husband was very touched and um, she framed it. I mean, she kind of, she, I think she ordered the frame, but then framed it herself. Um, but she did a great job. It's beautiful. Um, it just makes me smile every time I look at it, which is why I have, I'm so determined or I was so determined and to find a way to make finishing this old Christmas tree for her possible because I owe this woman. She has almost, she has no cross stitch in her home. All the cross stitch she's done over the years was always a gift for somebody else. Like this. So yeah, she's owed one. Um, she stitched it on linen. I don't know what the count is, but it's, it looks like it could be a 36 maybe. It's beautiful, 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 beautiful. Um, so I want to, I want this to be an heirloom piece that, um, this old Christmas tree that when I finish it, she has it for a while, then I get it. And then one of my children gets it and carries on down. So that's why I'm determined, determined to do a good job and fill it with love and happy thoughts. And so I'm super happy that I found a way to do that. Um, so I'm looking forward to making some more progress in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm trying to think what else I wanted to say. Um, thank you. Every, every couple of days, I get a couple more subscribers. Thank you so much. Um, it's kind of fun. I mean, it's going slow. It's not like I'm one of those floss tube fancy people who, you know, post the first video and suddenly they've got 800 subscribers. But I'm really happy. I've got 179, I think. And I've decided when I get to 200 subscribers, I want to do a giveaway. And what I will do is a um, gift card to an online store. Most likely it will be um, one, two, three stitch. Might be Fat Quarter Shop. Um, maybe I'll find a super awesome independent store. But right now those are the two that I have ordered from that have the things that I like. So that's, you know, they have a really good variety. So I think I'll probably go with one of them. Um, so I'll do, a, I'll do a gift certificate giveaway for that gift card, online gift card for that when I reach 200 subscribers. So if you like this video and you like hanging out with me a little bit and hearing my ramblings, um, then please, please do subscribe, give it a thumbs up and, um, Tell your other stitchy friends to, to watch Crazy Amy in Switzerland. Um, and I appreciate all the comments that are left, the, some of the questions that are asked. Mostly what I get is helpful hints, which are really appreciated. Um, I Floss Tube is so fun as a way to sit here and ramble on as much as I want about my cross stitch. And nobody's interrupting me and being like, Mom, we don't care. So... Thank you very much. Um, have a great two weeks. I hope you, oh, I hope you all had a great Mother's Day. If you, um, and if you didn't have a great Mother's Day, I hope you had a great next day. I hope it wasn't as icky as it's been in years past, is all I can say. Um, but yeah, uh, I will see you in two weeks. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye.